battery motor control devices. Good day. Today, I will be giving you a lecture again on the topic electric motors. Taking the subject industrial motor control and devices, you need to have a background on AC DC machines. Why? Because these are the devices that you are going to control using magnetic controllers or industrial controllers. That is why it's a prerequisite to the subject. But I know that uh, you don't have this subject yet. So I'm going to have some review on electric motors. Now remember, electric motors are the prime mover. Electric motors that will convert uh, electrical to mechanical. They don't be confused with the generator because generator that is uh, a device that will convert mechanical to electrical, okay? Because generator will generate electricity. So electric motors are prime movers. So you have a compressor, you have a mechanical, and then that will be driven using a pan belt or maybe a gear. Then your prime mover is the motor. So there are two classes of motor, single phase and three phase motors. And there are also two sources to energize this motor. We have the alternating current and we have the direct current. That is why we have DC motors and we have AC motors. First, uh, I'm not going to tell you how this motor runs, how this uh, motor works, or particularly what are the parts inside the motors. We are not very particular on that, considering that that is not our main uh, topic. No, so our mind only is just to let you know the connecting leads or the leads out of the motors how many leads out are there in a particular type of motor in a single phase including three phase but if you will uh, ask me sir how about the troubleshooting and repair now sorry i'm not going to tell you that i'm not going to give you or discuss with that because that is not our concern our concern this time is only the leads out of the motors. Why? Because there are controllers that are intended only in this particular motor. No? So, but remember, a three-phase controller can control a single-phase motor. Remember that. Because if you have three-phase source and then you have single-phase, so what you are going to do, you just condemn one of the phase of your uh, source. So, to make it a single phase motor. Anyway, I'm going to discuss you the difference between single phase and three phase lines. No? Why is it that uh, it is called three phase and why is it it is called single phase? So, that will be discussed to you. So that you have really a clear understanding on this particular uh, connections. No? The single phase and the three phase. Again, before we will really start studying control devices we need to know first the electric motors then how it uh, connect, how, how it is connected then how many leads out in that particular type of motor and then i'm not going also to discuss with you all types of single phase motors why because there are so many connections but once you know how to connect a single phase motor then the rest of the type of motors is not already difficult for you. Why? Because you have already an idea, including three phase. Now remember, in three phase, there are four types of three phase motor. No, uh, no, no. There are only three. But for single phase, there are so many types. In fact, in one type, there are uh, twelve connections. Another type, twelve connections. Another type, ten connections. See, but it is uh, the same motor. But it depends on the application, so you have to change the connections. If you want to run a motor for, shall we say, uh, three speed, then the connection is different. If you want also to connect the motor either 220 or 110 volts, then that is also a different connections. So we are only very particular of the, the uh, leads out. At the same time, 
uh, you should also uh, identify the terminal lugs, I mean terminal mark, okay? Because uh, knowing the terminal mark, then it is not very uh, difficult for you to connect in this particular connections. Why? Because you have the diagrams to follow, you have the caption to follow, okay? So again, I'm not going to tell you on how to troubleshoot the motor, or how to rewind motor, or how to diagnose the trouble, but we are only very particular of the connections, so that you will have, again, a clear understanding how would you control motor using magnetic controllers. So I hope uh, I am clear on that particular topic. No? So this morning, I will introduce to you first the two types of circuits, getting single phase circuit or three phase circuit. Then we know that uh, when we say single phase, we have two wires, right? then we have also three phase. So when we say three phase, in our mind, we have three wires, of course that is correct. But we are not uh, particular of the number of wires, but we are particular of the number of phases, phase, okay? So it is here. So when we say single phase, single phase, no, single phase, like this. So the symbol of phase is like this. No? That is the symbol. So when we say single phase, we have line one, we have line two, regardless of what is the voltage. Okay? So you can connect a single phase uh, device here, line one and line two. Then this is one phase. Of course, you have two wires. You might ask, so have single single phase, and then why is it that there are two wires? Well, not, we are not talking the number of wires, but we are talking the number of phases. So this is single phase. Now, how about three phase? Okay, what about three phase? Through three phase, you have three lines, of course. Like that. So you have your line one, you have your line two, and you have your line three. Okay. So. If this is rated 220 volt, so let's say AC, then this portion here, that one and that one, that is 220. That is one phase, meaning A, B, and C. So between A and B or line one, line two, that is one phase. It will come out 220. And then for B and C, that is another 220. That is another phase. And then, of course, for A and C, or line 1 and line 3, that is another phase here. 120. So there are three phases. Huh? 1, 2, and then 3. So that is called three phase lines. So there are motors that are three phase. Three phase cannot be connected into a single phase source. But single phase can be connected to a three phase source. Why? Because you can only select one of the phases here. If you want to connect A and B, B and C, or A and C, that can be done. Okay? So this is pair, this is a single phase, and this is three phase. So I hope it is clear to you. Now, second, next is the beer. So that is three phase. Again, we have single phase motor and we have three phase motor. First, let us take up single phase motor. So in single phase motor, you can have an EC or DC motor. Again, motor is a device that will convert electricity to or rather electrical to mechanical. Meaning, electric motor is a prime mover. Siya lang ang mo patuyok sa usa ka mechanical nga or engine using a uh, fan belt or maybe using a chain or maybe using a gear. It depends. Now, in single phase motor, there are uh, four types or rather five types rather. So first, we have here uh, 
split face motor. Okay? We have a split face motor. One. And then, we have also another one. We have the capacitor motor. I will explain this one by one. Then, we have also, uh, this is what we call the ECDC motor, meaning to say you have also a universal motor. Okay. Then, we have also a repulsion motor. That one. So, remember how we have the split phase, the capacitor, the universal, and then we have also the repulsion motor. Now, for, is, for capacitor motor, this, there are three types. For a universal, for you have only one, and for the repulsion, we have also three. But remember, we will not touch universal and repulsion. Repulsion motor, as of now, it is already obsolete. Why? Because of maintenance. And then, uh, what is very common here is the capacitor motor. Okay? Capacitor motor. So you have to take note that. No? Then I'm going to give you the split phase motor. Again, I'm not going to explain to you the different parts of the motor. But I'm going very, uh, I'm only very particular of the connections. Okay, so let us start the split phase motor. Now, split, uh, the definition of split phase motor is a fractional horsepower motor. A fractional horsepower motor. Meaning to say, if you happen to see a motor that is less than one horsepower, then that is a split phase motor. So if that will be more than one horsepower or even one horsepower, that is no longer a split phase motor. Okay? Now, how it is connected? In a uh, split phase motor, single phase motor, there are two windings. May I uh, the running and the static winding. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you have this. So inside, this is the schematic diagram of the single phase step phase motor. We have this. Okay. Oh. Okay. This is what we call your main winding or <coughs> running winding. While this one, this is your starting winding. The purpose of the starting winding is to start the motor. When the motor reaches 75%, no, of its full speed, automatically the starting winding is disconnected from the circuit and it is only the main windings connected constantly. So how it is connected? This is connected in parallel. And then, how would you disconnect the starting winding when the motor reaches 75% of full speed? This, there is what we call a disconnecting switch and this disconnecting switch is called centrifugal switch. Okay. Well, uh, if we will have a face-to-face -face lecture, then I will let you see the appearance of the centrifugal switch, and then I will explain also to you the principle how it opens when the motor reaches this uh, 75 percent. Okay. So you will notice that the starting winding is connected parallel to the running winding. So this is the diagram of the split phase motor. So if you have a controller, you have here the controller, so what you will do, you just connect line 1, line 2, to the line 1, line 2, or terminal 1, terminal 2, load side of the, your controller. So you have two connections. Now, in single phase, like for instance this one, if you want to uh, reverse the rotation, let us assume that this motor runs clockwise. Or not clockwise. But if you want to convert or uh, change the direction, what you will do is just simply interchange the connection of your uh, face, I mean single face, okay, like that. In order for you not to lose, no, so what you will do is, let us have this, this is standard terminal 1, and then this is terminal 4, this is terminal 5, and this is terminal 8. You might ask me where is a 2 and 3? and then the section 7, that will be the separator. 
So if you want to run the motor clockwise, of course, terminal 1 and 5 will be connected together. Terminal 4 and terminal will be connected together. So if you want to change the direction, what you are going to do is just interchange the starting wind. So terminal 5 now will be connected to terminal 4 and terminal 8 will be connected to terminal 1. Then the, the running, I mean, the direction of the motor will change. But there are two ways in reversing the split phase. If you don't want to reverse the starting winding, then your preference is to reverse the running winding. That can be, but not both windings. If you reverse the uh, starting winding, only starting winding. If you reverse running winding, only running winding. Because if you want, if you will reverse the starting winding, at the same time you will reverse the running winding, the same direction. Okay? So, that is it. So, you don't need to worry. For instance, this motor now, look at the motor, for the diagrams. So, what you will do is like this. There are four leads out in your motor. Okay? Four leads out. And then, let us say this is your stator. So, these are the four leads out of your motor. And this is your running wing. Okay. So, don't ever forget your terminal map. Okay, more than you know, dum No? So you have terminal 1, terminal 4, 5, and 8. So by looking only the terminal marks, you will know where are the beginning and the ending of the running winding, as well as in the starting winding. So if that is terminal 1 and terminal 5, these are all beginnings of the winding. And 4 and 8, the endings. Okay? So don't misconnect So if you want to uh, run this, you put it like this. Huh. So the motor now is running. Okay? That's the connection of your single phase uh, fractional horsepower motor or split phase motor. Then this split phase motor is not uh, intended for heavy loads. This is only for light load, for auxiliary loads. So when we have heavy loads, so we will no longer use single phase. We will be using three phase. Okay? So that is it. Now, how about capacitor motor? In a capacitor motor, there are three types. I mean, there is this. Okay? Remember, take note of this, huh? Because I will compile you these uh, diagrams. In capacitor motor, there are three types in capacitor motor. There are three types. But first, let us study capacitor. The device capacitor. Okay? If you will look at the capacitor, well, uh, in the old symbol, it looks like this. That is the symbol of capacitor. Then there is also another one, like this, that is also a symbol of capacitor. So you can use either of the two. There is no such positive negative considering that this is AC. Now what is a capacitor? A capacitor is a device that will store current. Meaning to say, mopundo o current. If the current will pass through the capacitor, there is already current stored here. That is why even the motor is already disconnected, don't ever touch the terminal where the capacitor is connected. Why? Because you will be, you will really feel the current there. So what you are going to do, you just simply short the line one, line two like that. Once it will spark, then the capacitor, I mean the current is stored in the capacitor is already removed and you are free to touch. Okay? So be careful on that. Whenever you find a device that having capacitor, please do not think that it is already off, it is already out of the circuit, then you are free to touch any of the wires. No, don't do that. Be safe. So what you will do? Short circuit it. The line one and line two. Once it will spark, meaning to say, the, the stored current of the capacitor is already removed. Now, there are two types of capacitor. First, we have what we call electrolytic capacitor. Please be careful on this because sometimes 
We will confuse. Electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitor is commonly known as starting capacitor. Why? Because this kind of capacitor is only good for a short period of time connected in the circuit. Meaning to say, it has an intermittent duty. So when we see intermittent duty, no? When we see intermittent duty, it is only good for a short period of time. I think uh, this feeling of intermittent there, the energy is lacking. I think that's the problem. So when we see intermittent duty, no? It is only good for a short period of time. Then the question there, sir, what if that will always be connected? Then of course it will explode. No? It will explode because that is only intended for a short period of time. The purpose of this is just to give uh, an, uh, a very high starting torque during starting. So when you, there is already a stored current there, plus the current that will come out. So really a tendency that it will produce high starting torque. Like that. No? That is uh, using the capacitor. Now, we have also another one. This is what we call oil capacitor. Or oil field, oil field capacitor. Okay. Again, the oil field capacitor is still connected in series with the starting only. And then this can be constantly connected in the circuit. Meaning to say, this cannot be removed. This is always connected in the circuit. So if you will be using electrolytic as well as oil field, during starting, you will really notice the difference. Just on the motor, then observe or watch how it runs or how it started. Then you will know that, that capacitor motor is electrolytic or oil field feed motor. Okay? So, oil field motor is called running capacitor. Okay? Or it has a constant duty. So, when we say constant duty, this is always connected permanently, no? connected in the circuit. Okay? So that are the two types of capacitor. Then you will know how it is connected in the circuit. Here. There are three classes of capacitor motor. So we have here, we call it capacitor start induction motor so how it is connected the connection here is similar to a speed phase motor what is the difference there is the capacitor so we have here the running capacitor I mean running only you have here the square cage rotor and then we have here the starting one here okay and then it has the same mark. This is terminal 5, this is terminal 8, and this is terminal 1, and this is terminal 4. Okay? So, the centrifugal switch, again, is connected in series. Okay? That is it. And then the capacitor is connected series with this starting window. It is there. So this is your electrolytic capacitor. Now this is the diagram of the one of the classes here. This is one class, one type. Capacitor is start induction motor. Then you have four legs out, no? One, two, three, four. And this is the connection. The capacitor is connected in series. So when the motor reaches 75% of its full speed, the central switch is open, then at the same time, the capacitor is also open, considering that this is connected in series. Then the motor will run normally because of main winding or running winding. Okay? So that is capacitor is an induction motor. The another type of the capacitor motor is capacitor run motor. Capacitor run induction motor. Or sometimes it is called permanent split 
thermally split capacitor run motor. Remember, ha? it is a capacitor run induction motor or permanent split capacitor run motor. It's the same. So, what you will do, here, you are now using the oil field capacitor. And then, there is no disconnected switch. Now, the typical example of this is the electric fan. The electric fan, the portable fan, no? the three speed, that is capacitor motor. Now, you will observe that a motor, a capacitor motor is using an oil filled capacitor during its starting, it will start gradually. And then it will run normally. But for capacitor, start induction motor using an electrolytic capacitor, it will run abruptly like that. Okay, that's the difference. Try to observe. So, though it is used as a, uh, it is used as an electric fan, no, it is used as electric fan, but don't ever think that it's only good for electric fan. No, even the capacitor start induction motor. This is a motor. This motor is still used as a, a, a prime mover of your electric fan. It depends. No, kinangla sila kusugit kayo. Okay, so this is one type of capacitor motor. Meaning to say, it has the same capacitance. The capacitance of the running winding is the same as the starting winding. Okay? So, this is your line 1, this is your line 2. Now, another one, another type of uh, capacitor motor is the two-value capacitor motor. We call it two-value Capacitor motor. No? Meaning to say, when you see two value capacitor, it has still the same. You have running winding. Then, you have this one. Then you have the starting winding. Hmm. This is still connected in parallel. The same terminal, 1458. But this time, you will be using the two capacitors, the oil pill and the electrolytic. How? It is here, not like this. You have the centrifugal switch, like that. Now considering that this capacitor is connected in series, we need to say that this is starting capacitor. This cannot be connected permanently because this will open after 70% of full speed. And then you have another capacitor. There. So this is your oil field or running capacitor. And this is your electrolytic field, electrolytic capacitor. So when you run the motor, the motor runs abruptly, no? Kusuk, kalit. Then, when motor reaches 75%, this connecting switch or central switch will open. Then, it's only the oil pin remain in the circuit. Then, the motor is running normally. So, it's still the same, line 1 and line 2. So, again, if you want to reverse, just interchange in terminal 5 and terminal 8. No? The same in the capacitor run motor. So these are the three types of uh, capacitor motor. Now, for you might ask me, sir, how about the compressor motor? Sa imong electric, ano? Sa imong refrigerator. That is capacitor start induction motor. But remember, in co there are three types of compressor motor. Huh? There are three types of compressor motor. Now, as you see, you open the uh, uh, try to go to Google and then uh, have that uh, capacitor motor or compressor motor. There it will come out. The difference of the capacitor motor, the capacitor uh, start induction, and the compressor motor. Remember, there are three types of compressor motor. We have hermetic type, 
We have semi hermetic type and we have also the open type. Kana mga open type motor kada makita nato nga compressor sa mga vulcanizing shaft, di ba? Na hanging, na pump then motor. Na na pandal. Then that is what we call open type compressor motor. That's very common, no? We can see that in a vulcanizing shaft or even uh, in an automotive shop, you can always see that type of compressor. But the hermetic type that is in the refrigerator, try to observe, try to find out, try to look at your compressor motor. There is no bolt there. There is no screw there. Why? Because that is welded. You will dig not. So if you want to, meaning the, the, maybe the wine digs there inside is shorted, then you want to rewind. So what you will do? You cut it using your haksu, okay? Or maybe using your uh, this cutting this, and then when you return it, you will it again. So hassle, deba. Right? But most of the cases, no, when the compressor motor now at this, ah, the compressor when the compressor motor is already shorted, the technician will recommend to buy a new motor. Why? You can rewind it, but it will not take long again. Why? Because it is not the original. It will take maybe around three to four months. Then again, there's trouble. So you better buy one. That is actually the recommendation. And then the semi-hermetic, you have here the, uh, the compressor, and then you have here the winding. So coupled na siya, but in one case. So you can really see the uh, coupled the motor there and that is similar so again I'm not going to tell you how it is done inside how it is work how it function but I am very particular of the single or other that lays out I hope you get it okay that is single phase motors so again if you have any questions you may ask it through our group chat then I will answer it before I will proceed to the next subject. I mean, to the next topic that we have. So our next topic, that would be the video for, will be three-phase motor. Right after giving you the three-phase motor, then there we will start having the magnetic starter. Ato naging industrial control. Now, I'm going to give you this uh, in details, no one by one. I will, uh, in, uh, I will give this information in advance. You know, it is very easy for you to design circuits if you know the principle of each part. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble every part to let you see how it works inside. Details in Asia. How it works? Because if you know the principle of operation, the particular device, then whenever you connect that and then runs and then there is an occurrence of trouble, then you can easily analyze what is the cause of the trouble. Why? Because you know the principle of operation. So there are only three, uh, three essential elements of magnetic starter, the most common. We have the magnetic conductor, we have the post buttons, and you have also the overload relay. And then these three materials or three parts of magnetic controller, I'm going to explain one by one. No, bungkagong ginako no. I will dismantle that. I will let you see what are the inside parts of the motor, how it is uh, located, how it is installed, and how it is connected. And at the same time. I will also tell you how to troubleshoot and repair a motor control device. So that would be for our next video. Thank you and good day.